Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, like Diamonds. Hey, and Luke Simons, like diamonds. Hello. Well done, Lukey. <laughs> We're uh, on the road in case you guys hear what might sound like trucks or birds getting hit in the windshield. Anything crazy might happen. We're uh, just passing lovely LaBelle, Florida. LaBelle, Florida, everyone. If uh, you're wondering what we're doing, we're coming back from a Keys trip where we went filming with Captain Mark Hollywood. Johnson. We did a bunch of Spanish mackerel stuff. That's been a question a lot of people have had. Um, and not necessarily like Spanish mackerel. A lot of the questions that we seem to be getting are from weekend warriors. A lot of dads and moms and um, people that have kids or grandkids just want to get tight lines. And so this entire trip is all about that, about just going out there and catching a bunch of fish fast without having to, you know, do a lot of tactical stuff. And it was pretty simple. We're going to talk all about that today. What we learned, I learned quite a bit on both the Spanish mackerel and uh, and the sharks. Caught some triple tail as well, which is a little more tactical, uh, or could be. And and Mark showed us how they, as guides, are taking complete newbies and still plucking off triple tail. A um, couple things, just some entertaining things while we've been on the road. If you want to know what we're doing, reading some books. Uh, we stopped at McDonald's. And uh, I understand why America is so fat. Uh, the car we pulled in next to, the I don't know if it was a guy or a girl, uh, but it was one of the heavier set people that was sitting inside chowing me down at McDonald's. But on the front of the driver's seat, they had a 12-pack of Dunkin' Donuts that they had had for breakfast and now eating McDonald's for lunch. Guys, come on. It ain't, it ain't that hard. Fewer calories in, than, then you're going to be burning. Uh, dang shocks me that people eat like that like I, I i haven't been to mcdonald's in i want to say at least a year like it's it's usually with you because you seem to like it maybe because it's consistent uh like on a road trip like this but man I, I feel horrible just eating mcdonald's yeah i only do it i only do it when i'm on the road and it's so it's it's not too frequent but it's the it's the only fast food that i trust you had a bad experience with KFC? Yeah, we had Joe eventually go to KFC, and uh, it was th- that was like 15 years ago. I had a bad experience there, and uh, we'll never go back. So, the other interesting thing was we're you know we listen we we love podcasts. We listen to other podcasts. Uh, we we love our boy Lunker Dog Captain Jeff Maggio and his Real Guys podcast. We're listening to that one. It was the the end of the Turtle Hunters, the last Turtle Hunter. Dude, way out there. Captain Jeff, I love you, dude. That was hilarious. Um, I, I don't know if it was hilarious is the right word. A little disturbing, but also kind of kind of spot on. Uh, dude, that was hilarious. Good. <laughs> we were laughing the whole time. Back to the trip. Back to the trip, guys. So my wife and I came down a couple days early, and uh, it was her birthday, and we rented house but if you saw those videos uh really cool experience we were out there in the middle of this little cove and the i don't want to say it was a misleading representation on airbnb um you know it it, he actually i went and reread it and it says you know you don't need air conditioner but it doesn't say he doesn't have one uh he was basically saying like all these things like hey get ready to get your feet wet and he didn't literally say like hey you you have to wade out in the water even to get to the john boat or your uh, your tender to get to the real boat uh so we pull up you know in, in in decent clothes and my wife had you know like tennis shoes on and we like realized holy crap like we we literally have to wade with with our luggage and, and groceries out to the John boat that's moored out off there because he doesn't you know he doesn't pay for a dock uh, dock space so that's kind of out there in the middle of this little lagoon and then we have to get off uh, on the boat and so anyhow man what a what a cool experience thank goodness it was cool weather it would have been brutal on that thing in the in the summertime and thank goodness it was you know not raining or lightning or anything crazy that would have made for a very very interesting trip and then luke came in monday 
and uh, last uh, what two days we've just been nonstop uh, living on a boat on a different houseboat, and then out there with Captain Mark Johnson. And so, first day, Luke was we didn't really have much of a game plan. We we filmed some dock fishing or uh, uh, dock tips uh, on you know tying the best knots for keeping your um, your boat tied to a dock overnight. Um, mooring it uh that, that was last time uh we did it was just a lot of, boat, a lot of boating other tips ones. So it mostly you wanted to get out uh come down here and do some good boating tips and then i'll also add some good fishing tips uh and something specific to the keys we have a lot of people who have uh sent us emails and hey i'm going on vacation out of the keys what should i do where should i fish what should i target and so what part of the goals was to to give some some actual an actual recipe if you will to go out there and have success and spanish mackerel was the target for that because it's relatively easy it's surprisingly good like we've we've been eating spanish mackerel last two evenings and it's just delicious if you clean it properly and uh and so obviously we did videos on how to clean it uh but more importantly we did videos on what type of areas to find and, and how to get them active behind your boat and then obviously what lures to use what rigs to use obviously you need, you need wires so how to tie the wire on um, just basically everything you need to know to go down there and just have have success and so that was the key so uh, it was mostly mostly fishing that first morning we did some of the boating stuff uh, waiting on the sun to get up uh, before triple tail action and uh, it turned out to be an awesome uh, awesome couple days yeah and the secret to the spanish mackerel and, and we went to a completely random spot and even on the public video we, you know we show the gps spots i mean it, it, and we did it two days in a row just mark wanted to show that this works and went to a random spot and and uh and just started drifting and put a big chum block out there so what do you remember the name of that chum i can't remember it was just the normal chum block there was, it wasn't anything fancy yeah any chum block you see at the at the your local marina will, uh, your local tackle store will have it and we just started drifting and both times i mean within it was certainly under 20 minutes it might have been 15 10 i mean and we just started casting you know kind of randomly in the in the in the chum slick and both days i mean all of a sudden like it was crazy they just turned on and you could see them out there slashing uh and these are big spanish mackerel i mean you right you got your pb dude yeah, which really isn't, isn't saying much. I never really target them, but I'm going to start targeting more after uh, getting a taste of how good they are. Uh, but yeah, they were they were big. They're a lot of big big mackerel. Um, sharks were coming to spread too. We got some sharks. We got a cobia. Uh, obviously, jacks and ladyfish too. You know, pretty much. The, the cool thing about that type of fishing is that you're pretty much going to catch whatever's in the area because you're just getting everything fired up. And you don't have to have anything fancy. We didn't have any live shrimp. We were just using some frozen shrimp and then also uh, a slam shady little paddle tail on a jig head. And everything everything worked. You know, it wasn't like if we didn't have natural bait, we wouldn't have had success. We could have gone out with just a chum bag, uh, a block of chum, and slam shadies, and we would have we would have caught more than we could have possibly eaten ourselves. Yeah, what, what was really cool is, you know, Captain Mark does this for a living, and he's got five boats now, and as you can imagine how much he spends in a year on on bait, you know, doing that kind of fishing, and he was watching us, because I, I was on one side of the boat, we're casting in the same slick right behind, uh, right behind his, uh, his uh, Isla Mirada Boat Works, a uh, beautiful new, uh, new boat, and uh, I was catching just as many Spanish mackerel as Luke was on the shrimp. And it, what's even more interesting is Luke was using these frozen farm-raised shrimp, which are, I don't know, was it a third of the price of... Of live shrimp? No, it was, it was like a quarter, if not a more. A quarter, a quarter, so I was off a little bit. So, and, and that they were both killing it. And he's just like, man, like this could be game changing if if he could buy some slam shadies, uh, which he can because he's an insider, and have these shrimp out there. Because there are going to be some days where you want to have shrimp over uh, a paddle tail, 
as much as I love this lamp shady. And uh, he's like, man, I could be saving tens of thousands of dollars a year. And I, I think this could be game changing for a lot of guides who rely on shrimp using this, this farm raised stuff. Um, and, and this is not new uh, in terms of farm raised shrimp. Farm raised shrimp has been around for a long time. And there's been a lot of guides who have tried it, including Mark, who tried it. There was a local uh, group there in the Keys that was trying to do the farm raised stuff for fishermen and it bombed. And for some reason, this certain type of shrimp, I don't know if it's the size or the color, the scent, there's something with it that uh, that, that is really working not as well as a live shrimp. I don't think I don't think it ever will. Uh, but I mean, it's it's just as much as they could ever ask for for a fraction of the price. And uh, I thought that was uh, that was pretty cool. Um, I, I think we still lost a couple. Even that wire leader is a little bit frustrating. We still lost a, a couple rigs, a couple, yeah, a couple that's, jig that's, heads, that's and mackerel fishing. Big old mackerel slashing through there. But uh, man, doggone, what a what a what a blast! And especially for a family, man, like I, I wish my kids could have been out there. Uh, you see so much. I mean, you know, you know, you see the sea turtles coming up. Reminds me of Captain Jeff again. Uh, <laughs> you guys have to listen to that episode, by the way. Literally going up and jumping on the backs of sea turtles. Um, I'm, I'm, I still can't get this thought out of my head of the sea turtles. But anyhow, the sea turtles and uh, the sharks that would come up you know i mean the, i have so many triple tail i've never seen so many buoys in my life yeah it was uh it was shocking how many buoys were out we um, we covered a lot of a lot of water and i bet you we can't we went across ten thousand buoys or something it was it was insane how many crab and lobster traps are out there but uh a lot of them were holding triple tail we didn't come unfortunately we didn't come across any big ones uh, but a lot of the small ones that were a lot of fun because it's it's just it's fun sight fishing those triple tail are right under the buoy you cast to them you watch them follow you watch them eat it's uh it, it's a really cool experience and, and while we're on that uh, we had mentioned earlier about uh, a tactic that they use so what these guides they are using when they go hit these buoys and by the way these are for stone crabs and lobsters seem to be the the two big things that that all these commercial guys are out there uh crabbing uh trapping for and what they do the guides is they use and it reminded me of just like an old school bright yellow uh bobber that you'd use for like you know in the lake as a kid right what size is that i mean it's it's just a bobber. The, the key is just using a bobber. It doesn't really matter what size it is. Sometimes, like if it was windy, we, a, a popping cork would have been better, right? Because it actually has enough weight to cast a shrimp. Um, so it doesn't really matter what type of bobber you have. Ideally, not a giant one. You want it as small as possible. But uh, like I personally would have preferred to have a popping cork because the you know weighted popping cork just to be, just to enable the, the cast to be a little bit easier. But uh, but the key is just to float it instead of free lining a shrimp which is tough to do because you can't see exactly where the shrimp is. And the, the number one mistake is, or the, the, I guess the, the number one thing to make sure you never do is to have the lure or the, the hook get snagged. So to have the shrimp go on the opposite side of the rope, you want to drift it as close as you can as possible to the buoy without getting snagged on the rope. And without a, without a popping cork or something to let you know where the, the bait is, you, you're kind of guessing at it. Um, so, so the bobber just helps you know exactly where the shrimp is so you can get a better drift more consistently. And, and most importantly is to not get snagged on that rope. Yeah, once you, once you snag the rope, uh, it's game over. Yep. And also for a guide or a father or a mother, if you do have two kids and you're both trying to fish the, the buoy, it's so easy to look up real quick and boom, see. In their case, it was a bright, one of those bright, I think it was bright yellow. Uh, little bobbers where they could see exactly where it was and tell them real, 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 like get away from, you know, get away from the line. Uh, I thought that was super helpful. And, uh, but that was another one, dude, where the, we had live shrimp in that case fishing, uh, you know, for triple tail and the slam shady was getting, you know, just as many strikes. Yeah, because it's easier. I mean, uh, like you, you were, when we were doing, the, now we have video footage, we'll, we'll post some videos of, of the trip. We were doing the mackerel, you know, I was on one side of the boat, Joe was on the other. We were both casting straight back into the slick of the uh, of the chum, 
and you definitely caught more mackerel than I did. Oh, it's on! Uh, it's on! Record! Here not, it is! Yeah, not, not because of any skill, but you know, I was spending. I had to spend a lot of time rebaiting the hook, right? Like a lot of times, those uh, I was just we were we were using jig heads, or for the shrimp at least, we were you know using jig heads and then just threading uh, shrimp onto the jig head. And so, in many cases, you know, something would just would bite short, and so it would just rip the shrimp off. Um, or I'd have a fish on and get off. And so every time something happened, long story short, every time something happened where I got a strike, regardless if I caught the fish or not, I would have to replace the shrimp, and which just takes time. And then conversely with the, the paddle tail is it was getting a lot of action. It was getting like pretty much just as many strikes, if not maybe a little bit less, but you, you spent zero time having to rebait it, right? Because it stayed on there. Um, so you were just able to, to spend more time fishing, less time rigging, which is what really made the, the actual catch ratio per hour better. Yeah, and on that one slam shady, well, we landed, I think, four mackerel and a cobia. A cobia came up right to the back of the boat. Remember, that was awesome. Yep. We thought it was a little shark because it came out of nowhere. And uh, actually, Mar Captain Mark Johnson had the rod in his hands, and he just did a quick pitch to it and uh, ended up landing a cobia all in that one lure, which is crazy because those things, I mean, they were they slashed through wire uh, in a couple times. And I, I can't, I still can't believe that Slam Shady lasted as, uh, as long as it did. But that was cool. And I think, too, the other one benefit about having a shrimp on a jig head is when why we were watching the fish finder, we go across some areas. I mean, there was a ton of life down there. And, and Captain Mark had mentioned that, you know, with this chum slick, you attract a lot of stuff, not just these these roamers that a lot of times are in the upper part of the of the water column, like these Spanish mackerel. Uh, but, I mean, some of these snapper and stuff that were on the bottom, just kind of getting some of the leftovers as well. And it's like, you can catch some, some massive uh, – mangrove snapper uh right underneath the, the boat as well just uh you know dropping the shrimp down so it was cool i, I learned a, a lot and we hadn't really done that kind of fishing in a long time we, you know we did some with our dad uh way back in the day I, I don't remember necessarily going after spanish mackerel per se i remember bluefish i remember for a while dad gone on the uh what was it black bass kick do you remember that were you old enough for that sea bass yeah i mean yeah sea uh, sea bass you remember uh the sea bass yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. Going out dropping uh, dropping squid down and yeah. catching a ton of those things yeah so that was good that was really really fun and then uh we did it again the second day different spot just to kind of you know prove that it would work and it did and we also needed to catch a couple of of those oily spanish mackerel and some ladyfish to chum up for shark fishing. And now shark fishing, a little controversial in, in some instances. Um, you know, there's the conservation piece of it. Um, you know, there's those two knuckleheads that were dragging the shark through the water. I mean, <clears throat> there's been a lot of things with shark fishing, both, you know, pros and cons. And and quite honestly, we, we, we stayed away from it, not necessarily because of that, just because we never really target them. I mean, shark, even I, I saw, we did that video, Luke, and I don't know if you've seen the comments yet, but people, the first question people asked was like, were you targeting these on purpose or was it, uh, you know, a bycatch? And uh, so this time we decided to go out there and, and, and actually target shark and same deal, uh, you know, in, instead of the slick of a chum bag, we had the slick of some of the Spanish mackerel and ladyfish uh, just butterflied up. And dude, I mean, that was crazy how quickly sharks came to the boat. Yeah, within 20 minutes, uh, it was, you know, the first one came, uh, came fired up as one of those, I think the, uh, it was Atlantic Sharp Nose, I believe is the name of it. But uh, anyhow, it was a smaller one, came in, fired up, ready to rock. And we had a big shark rig ready, but if this was a smaller shark. And so we just grabbed the same rod we're using with the mackerel had the same jig head on and just put a little chunk of uh of mackerel on there and that thing just smoked it <laughs> it was an extra it's, it's going to be amazing footage because it I, I was purposely holding the bait close to the surface and, and just like not even casting it like almost like cane pulling it um and then joe was up on the tower with the camera and so yeah the shark just came right up the surface and slurped it down and uh caught that one then Maybe five minutes later, and the same thing happened. Another sharp nosed shark. It was it probably five, ten minutes later? Another one came, and it was just, it was constant action. And then 
the craziest part was a big old hammerhead that uh, that showed up, and it was really fired up. That was uh, that was a really cool experience. Got some amazing footage, and obviously on that one we went to the big rig, and um, it wouldn't hit the chunk that we had at first. So Mark literally put like an entire. It was a smaller Spanish mackerel, but basically put a whole mackerel out there. Uh, threw it in this in this hammer hoods path which that had like already circled the boat probably five times at that point yeah. something like that and uh sure enough came up and just just sucked down that mackerel and game on came on with that big old shark it was crazy and for us we thought it was huge uh and mark's like oh, yeah this is good uh i mean it was right i mean yeah, it was like an eight footer. He's like, that's 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 the size we'd like to go fly fishing for. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, so you're talking about you know an eight foot hammerhead that's certainly over two hundred pounds. I don't I don't know if it was over three hundred, but it, I mean, he said he said it was around two hundred. It, it, it to me it looked a whole lot bigger than a two hundred pound tarpon. It just looked massive. And he's like, oh yeah, you know we've we've seen them in the 800, 900 pound range. I was like, I cannot imagine a hammerhead shark that big. Uh, but it was definitely a lot of adrenaline. Really cool. I understand why people, you know, like to target them. Still a lot of, you know, a lot of safety stuff, which we covered in terms of safely releasing them and, and making sure that the, all humans are safe and the shark is returned without any uh, damage uh, at all to, to the shark. <clears throat> and it was really cool. Uh, I, once again, I can understand why, why people uh, enjoy doing that and, Gosh, that another time where I wish my kids would have been there to see it. They would have absolutely loved not necessarily fighting uh, the, the the shark because I mean you were worn out. It was like fighting a two hundred pound tarpon. Yeah, I didn't. Have, I, I caught those three right before it, and then you know again five minutes later, I uh, got that big one. And man, I it was, was it was a thirty minute fight. I mean it was. Yeah, it was. Oh yeah, I was. I was. I was done. I was over it. What was what was also cool for all of you saltwater anglers. I love the fact we didn't have to get new equipment. Like Luke and I took out our three thousand, the same three thousand Daiwa that I'm using to catch bass behind our house, to catch snook and redfish and trout, to the cobia, to the Spanish mackerel, to even those sharks. The only time we changed it was on that big hammerhead because we were talking about a 200 plus pound fish and that we went up to a 4500 Daiwa and not necessarily and we're obviously not sponsored by Daiwa uh that, that happened was, to be what Mark happened, had on there but that was crazy yeah and I brought I've been testing out this uh Piscifun reel it's uh it's a reel it's a definitely a budget reel this was probably like 50 60 bucks and it's a 2000 size and uh so I, I use that as well I caught triple tail mackerel I uh, didn't. I didn't pitch any of the sharks with it because that might have been uh, might have been outplayed. But, but yeah, just it was cool to to see how you can use the same equipment for totally different fisheries and and, and species and still have still have success. And you don't have to get all all new stuff, which is uh, which I think is so cool. And even with the hammerhead shark, none of the reels were over like a hundred and ten dollars. Um, so it was it was nice to see that you don't have to go out. Because I made that mistake for many years. I would go get like the nicest reel, you know, two hundred plus dollars, and I'm kicking myself now, realizing that hey, I really didn't need to spend that money. I should have saved, you know, over a hundred dollars and just stuck with, you know, a, a good quality reel that's not super expensive, knowing that it can get the job done. Yep. And then. Um Let's talk about one of the other really cool parts was cooking it all up. Doggone. Yeah, well, we didn't cook it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. So, you know, Mark told us to take this Spanish mackerel into um, called the shrimp shack. We did a little video too, you guys will see. And I'm, I'm kind of like you, Luke. Like, normally, uh, like, even this summer, we caught a ton of Spanish mackerel off the beach at Boca Grande, and I, I didn't keep them. I was like, oh, Spanish mackerel, eh. Um, just didn't excite me as much, but you know, Mark showed us how he cleans them. Which the biggest thing is just getting that that center bloodline out, right? I mean, that was really the the big piece. Yeah, I need it fresh too. I mean, it went the, oh, yeah. the day of. Yeah, the, it was it was remarkably good. So we took it in across the street to where we were staying to the shrimp shack, and you you, you hand them your bag of fish that I mean had just been cleaned. I don't know an hour beforehand, I guess. 
and um, you, you tell them how you want it. And I think we what we got the blackened was the blackened tacos were probably the best. Yeah, that was hard to beat. And man, delicious. And then the other one was a senator, which had almonds, some kind of butter, garlic, uh, delicious. And then what was the other one? Con- the continental. Was continental. And um, that had. I don't even know what was on it. It was it was really t- that was more of like a pan saute type thing. Yeah, some, like, a lot of butter, a lot top. of butter. And then there was a a coconut crusted, and then another one as well. That were all good. I mean, they, they were they were all delicious. But um, yeah, the blackened and the continental were my two favorites. Yeah, and uh, one of the coolest parts for us was uh, right when we sat down the first night, we went to the same restaurant both times and, and tried different ways of, of cooking up this mackerel. Uh, this guy next to us is kind of looking at us, and he, uh, he said, hey, what can I buy you a drink, or, or what are you guys drinking? I don't remember what it was, and it turns out it's an insider. It was a fellow insider who, who lives down there and is about to move up to St. Pete. Uh, Bob, uh, so cool to meet you if you happen to be listening to this. And I uh, ended up catching up with him for uh, you know a solid hour and shared some of the fish and then met two guys next to us uh, that were down here fishing from where? I can't remember where they're from. Um, somewhere close to the border of Canada. So let's just call it. I think it was Michigan. Michigan, no, it was uh, it was like Minnesota or North Dakota, somewhere. Anyhow, really nice guys. We gave them some uh, some fish, so we we spread the love around, shared shared some fish, broke some bread, and uh, and just just had an absolute uh, blast. And I have a whole new world of respect for Spanish mackerel for uh, for dinner. And once again, as long as it's fresh and you get that uh, that bloodline out, we we'll have a whole video by the way on that. So we did film a whole separate video on how to clean those things and, uh, and, and, you know, make sure you're getting the best filet possible. Uh, man, that was so good. And then the next night, so which was last night, we went back again with Captain Mark, did a little, uh, a little video there of, of, uh, really helping out the shrimp shack more than any, uh, anything else because of all the, all the love they, uh, they gave us. And we'll, uh, we'll be posting that up as, uh, as well. Told some stories with Captain Mark and uh, and came up with some some game plans for next year, and he's got a lot of good ideas. You know, uh, down there in the Keys, I mean, you know, we only went on one side, right? I mean, th- there's so much that you could do. I mean, the last time we were here, we went out, uh, obviously uh, not on the Gulf side, and went daytime sword fishing, and you got mahi mahi just ten miles out or or closer. Um, you know the sailfish bite is uh, is crazy, and of course you know the tarpon pretty much year round, and the bonefish and permit. There's so much uh, we could do, and one cool thing about all of this, the Spanish mackerel stuff we've been talking about, uh, Mark said that I mean that's he would do the same thing off of Tampa, uh, obviously different spot, uh, spot uh, but same conditions, and so we talked through all that. This was not key specific. This is how to go out there in the salt water in a bay boat. Most uh, uh, was really what we were kind of talking about like you know bay boat fishing and just go out there and get tight lines so we'd love to hear from all of you on any specific species or places that you would like us to to cover um why we were sitting down with Mark, and you know, we talked about doing some some more traveling, and, uh, and and he wants to do more of that now that he has a team himself. So he started off as a captain, uh, one man shop, just like most fishing captains do, and now he's got five people, six including him, and so he has a team where he can take off a little bit more, and know that his business is going to keep keep running, and his guys will uh, will take care of the customers. And so uh, we talked about that, which I think is exciting for uh, us. And know uh, we heard we heard a lot of that in the feedback about you know Luke and myself and, and Tony and maybe even getting more fishing coaches on board to go out there and uh, and, and and do some more test and do some more insider reports and do some more footage in different places. So let us know. My email, if you made it this far, is a uh, Joe J O E at saltstrong.com and Luke. L-U-K-E at saltstrong.com. Luke at saltstrong.com. So, yeah, hit us up. We would uh, we would love to hear from you. And um, what else? Oh, still still trying to beat Orvis, guys. 
if you're still listening, we need your help. Please, please, please leave us a five-star review. Subscribe. So if you don't know the whole Orvis thing, we were looking at, at all of the the fishing podcast, um, and now there's some that are kind of a blend, like the April Vokies of the world, and um, you know some of the ones that talk about hunting and fishing. But in terms of like fishing, uh, the one that has the most reviews, and, and it could be because they've been doing it longer than anyone, uh, but it's Orvis, and we love Orvis as a company. Uh, I think it, it was... I have a couple Orvis fly rods. Yeah, and, and I even have Orvis luggage. Great, great company. But we still were competitive and we wanted uh, to beat them. And we put that out there. We got super, super close and uh, I think they got wind of it and got their people on board and uh, they got, got in the lead again. So we would love to help you, help us help you to get more reviews and why I say help you? Well, that helps us get better guest. It helps us get found in the search engine, which helps this whole thing continually get better and us never have to put a bunch of ads on there. Some of these other podcasts now are getting upwards of seven minutes, seven minutes before they even get into the podcast. The first six and a half minutes are literally just an ad roll. And man, that is to me annoying. And I've, I've kind of stopped listening to most of the podcasts that are uh, like that. I just, I, I don't have time to sit there and listen to, I don't mind if it's one or two, but when you start talking about 10 different ads it drives me nuts but then again they have to do that to be able to pay their bills we've been very fortunate we have an amazing insider club where this could just be you know a free add-on that we uh, that we do but once again that all helps because of the reviews so please 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 leave us a review and uh and then anything else you guys want us to do um we, we kind of have a clean slate for 2020 which is cool we hit our big goal of 10,000 insider members if you're not one you got to join. One big thing we're working on is discounts. We heard from a lot of members as well, you know, get more discounts. Um, and, and, and we already have some awesome ones too. Oh, and it's something yeah. that we've never, we, we hardly even talk about. Uh, but just like one, you know, when an insider member does join, you know, there is a whole discount section with, with some really good discounts. We actually can't say what they are because a lot of the companies don't want us, you know, showing uh, or, or talking about the, uh, the amount of discounts, but they're on uh, some big names, uh, most of which you probably already have some of. So definitely, again, recommend checking that out, and it'll only be growing next year. Yeah, and it, I mean it's the same stuff that we're using. I mean, I mentioned Daiwa reels. Uh, I mean, I, I'm saving hundreds of dollars a year just from the discounts and the same stuff that we would be buying anyways and you're probably already buying um and if we don't have it you just let us know we can we can usually go negotiate it for the for the whole group and everybody wins um you know it was really interesting you know someone had posted on a facebook group not too long ago hey i you know i keep seeing salt strong in my feed they they you know they're doing a lot of cool stuff is, is it worth it like joining the club that was the question is, is it worth it and it was interesting, the feedback, I saw a couple of our, our members, a couple of them who have been members for multiple years, so they're renewing, it means they love it. Uh, they also obviously said yes, but what was really interesting, uh, I thought they were gonna talk about the community and the friendships they made and, and some of the shortcuts, and they justified it by talking about the discounts. Like, well, yeah, like it's a great place to learn some, some tips and tricks. And one of these is a captain. Uh, I think a lot of people think, oh, it's only for newbies. I mean, this dude is a, he's a captain. I mean, he's out there putting people on fish. But it was interesting. He said he loves his shortcuts, but the discounts. He's like, I, I make my money back just from the discounts alone. And uh, I thought that was so interesting. And it makes sense, you know, that we're logical people. Uh, we're emotionally tied into stuff, but logically is how we explain it to someone else. And that was what happened there on that uh, that that uh, that Facebook forum or whatever the heck it was, where the guy posted it. So I was like, all right, all right, next uh, next year, 2020, we're uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, more of the discounts, a lot more community stuff, uh, some live events, some fishing trips with us. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to try to do at least two, if not four, trips with. Luke and I, um, and that is going to be insiders only. I, I will preface that one more reason to, uh, to join, uh, that is going to be insiders only and an inner circle, uh, deal. That's something that we tried, uh, I guess, gosh, it's been a year and a half now. And we tried it with a really small group of people had 11, uh, in there. And what that was, was, uh, actually it was a monthly call. And a lot of people said, Hey, I'd, I'd love to be able to get on like a, a essentially a live webinar with you guys 
uh, every week, like every Thursday, and talk about just what's working right now so I can go out there and catch fish. Uh, you know, we're putting out new content every single day, but a lot of people want, you know, don't, don't have time to look at it and just want to know, hey, what's what do I do this weekend? I don't have time to go watch the last three or four videos. What am I doing? Uh, you know, where should I fish? Uh, what should I target? What depth are they? And uh, so we're going to be start doing that as well. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you check your emails. We will be sending some info on that. We'll probably only open it up to insiders again, uh, just to keep it small and not uh, not overdo it. Uh, and eventually might go to uh, the public. So just one more reason to become a salt strong insider. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot of this footage. We'll start rolling out from uh, from the Keys. The best news is that it pertains to anywhere there's saltwater fish that has Spanish mackerel and sharks, which is pretty much everywhere that we've uh, that we've that we've fished. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped, man. What a just a, a fun trip. Always a blast fishing with uh, with Hollywood and uh, meeting the great people down there in the in the Florida Keys. And uh, and now now doggone it, we have a, a great way to to uh, uh, to cook up Spanish mackerel. Yeah, and if you are on vacation down there and you want to have a good time on the water and you don't feel like trailing a boat down. Uh, definitely reach out to, to his, his group, his company. It's uh, FordaKeysFunFishing.com. Great people, uh, great fishermen, and, uh, and they will definitely put you on some fish. And the cool thing is, yeah, that, that restaurant right up the road, take your catch there. They cook it up, and it, it, is, it is extremely good. Yeah, the Shrimp Shack. Shrimp Shack. And, uh, and definitely check out the post that we did on Instagram. You'll even see the houseboat uh, that that my wife and I stayed in, the one that Luke and I stayed in. If you have any questions on that, we can uh, hook you up with that info is, uh, as well. The one at Angler House Marina, which is where we stay with Captain Mark, that one has, I mean, every amenity known to man and really cold AC. We had to crank down to, what, 67 or something? Yeah, Woo, nice baby boy. I slept. So well last night. Wasn't even funny after a couple of cold beers after fishing and being out in the sun all day long and and eating I don't know probably three people's worth of Spanish mackerel. Dang, slept so well. So guys, thank you for all the love, all the support. We are still in Orange Grove country. We ended up not doing the turnpike. We went straight up the middle because Luke Scott Otis in Winter Haven. Uh, you know I live there and I'm excited to see my uh, my kids who i haven't seen in, in i guess left friday so it's been a while and uh and you know my wife who uh, left the keys a couple days ago so yeah we're uh we're stuck in the dead pretty much the dead middle of florida going up here not much going on here a lot of orange groves a couple old boat boats for sale heartland animal hospital just keep reading off what we're seeing Orange Grove, Orange Grove. That's it, guys. Bear Crossing. We got a Bear Crossing sign. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, guys, for all the support. If you made it this far, please, please, please shoot us an email. Joe at saltshorn.com. Luke at saltshorn.com. Let us know what you want to see in 2020, more, what you want more of, what you want less of, how we can improve, how can we serve you better. And then, please, if you haven't, leave us a five-star review. You guys rock. We be out. Talk to you on the next episode. Cause fishing, it's in my soul, it was pain.